so you can be a part of the Sunday School lesson. We've been having a great time with some outstanding teaching going on, and certainly we want you to be a part of that as well. So if you haven't been Zoomed in, give us a call at the church, and we'll make sure that we get everything set up for you, that you'll be invited to be a part of our Sunday School Zoom on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. And then also, don't forget on our Wednesday church-wide prayer and precept hour, we began at 7 p.m. And that is free conference call. And we send those out to every church member. And basically, I've heard some comments in reference to, but I don't know all about all that technology, and I'm not this, and I'm not that. Listen, when it comes to freeconferencecall.com, all you have to do is dial a number, like you're dialing a long-distance phone number, and then it'll ask you, the welcome, says, welcome to freeconference.com. And we want you to understand there's no technology involved. It's just a simple use of your iPhone. Simple use of your uh, of your actual landline if you have, and all you have to do once the recording says now please enter your access code, then all you have to do is just enter that in, and basically you'll be received and accepted in, and you're part of the conference. And we've been averaging a good number of members part of that conference. And we've been having some great lessons and some great powerful praying that takes place in that hour. So we want to invite you to continue utilizing those services as well. Our Wednesday Bible study, just like what we're doing right now, will continue uh, until we get to that point where we open. And I do believe, I do believe that coming up on the first Wednesday, uh, no, it won't be the first Wednesday, it'll be July 1st, I think it'll be July 8th, July 9th, that Wednesday after the first Sunday, we will open back up our prayer band hour, which begins at 11 o'clock. But all of this information will be shared and given to you as we get closer to that time. So we will send that out full blast through all of our media sources and all of our technology is really has played a wonderful part in keeping us connected and you will be notified and then again I want to continue to uh, praise all of you for your graciousness and your giving your generous generosity and your giving you have been gracious you have been generous and I want to thank you because God has really truly been blessing us in that way and I want you to continue utilizing Giblify, Cash App, Mail In, and listen, even if you have, didn't know, all you have to do as far as Mail In, if you need envelopes, we will send you self-stamp uh, addressed envelopes that you all you have to do is put your tithes and your offering in and mail it on back into the church. And we'll see to it that you get all of those things as it relates to envelopes. So please, there's no reason why we should not continue in our loving ways and the way we did at Park Avenue. You have really done a magnificent job. I am so happy and excited about the fact that many of you are giving above and beyond your normal tithes and offerings. So thank you so much and let us continue to give in that way as we move forward. Now, I want to remind us in reference to this coming Friday as we make ready to share names for our prayer. And we want all of you to know these names are not just for me to pray, but I want all of the church family to be in prayer for these individuals and their families. This uh, coming Friday, June 12th, I do believe, uh, at the Serenity Funeral Home will be the homegoing celebration of one of our very fine members, very faithful member, Sister Janie Riley. Janie Riley was very faithful to this wonderful church and she has done a great work and she, uh, until her health has failed her, she remember she's been on the member of the sick and shuttered list for a great period of time. But we thank God for the opportunity to be a part of a homegoing celebration as we celebrate her life and legacy on Friday at 11 o'clock is the services. Now, visitation is from 9 to 
11. And the services once again will be at the Serenity Funeral Home, which is located here in Kansas City, uh, Bannister Road and Truster Avenue. Bannister Road and Truster Avenue. So we look forward to seeing some of you there. And then, of course, uh, they have a greater capacity as far as limitation. Uh, so they are not just restricted to the minimum. They can go up as high as 200 can be seated in the service so that accommodates the family easily. So there's enough room for the church family and all the friends of the family. So we thank God for them in that way and we're praying for them. So let us continue to lift up the uh, Riley family. And then so let us also continue to pre in prayer for George Floyd family. On this past Tuesday, on Tuesday, yesterday, I believe, uh, uh, I think the services were in Houston, Texas. And what a service they, uh, I didn't get a chance to see all of it, but I heard and I got to see good clips of it, heard some good preaching, and uh, great, great, great celebration of life for Brother George Floyd. And uh, we certainly praying for that family, the children, praying certainly for the siblings and all of the family members and those that are tied in. And we're also praying continuously. Let us continue to pray for the Park Avenue family. Remember, we have lost six wonderful, beautiful, faithful, loving uh, church members this year. And starting in the month of January all the way up until this month of June. And so we're praying for all of the families, not just the Riley family, but we're praying also for the Haynes family, we're praying for the Jordan family, praying for the Liggins family, and we're also praying for the Gray family. And we ask that you would continue to lift up all of them in your prayers. And then we also want to include the family of Pastor Kenneth Ray, very fine pastor here in the Kansas City area for many years at the Highland Baptist Church. And certainly we're praying for not only his family, but we're praying for that church family as well. And we ask that you continue to lift up all of the bereaved families in that way. You know, COVID-19 has claimed over 107,000 lives in, in, in a short period of time, the few months that it's been uh, here in the United States. And we're praying for comfort for those family members and those who have uh, gone on as a result of COVID-19. And then we're just praying certainly for all of those that are in the hospitals and in our nursing homes. We continue to pray for those on our sick and shut-in list, Sister Mary Childress and Mother Margaret Gibson, Sister Wanda Hervey, Deacon Preston Williams and Deacon Jerry Rice, and then Sister Ophelia Brazzer, Brother Devon Bowman, Yvonne Coleman, Robert Caldwell, Carl Dowdy, Adela Galloway, Sheila Johnson, Ellen Law, from the Lemon family, Sister Maddie Logan, and we continue to lift up many of names in that way. And certainly we're just praying for Sister Darlene Freeman, who's recovering from her surgery and doing well. And we continue to pray for Sister Alberta Fight and also Sister Joanne Washington. So we continue to have maybe other names that we can add to the list that I may not have, but you know about. Lift those names up in prayer. When you go in prayer, as always, we want to pray for everyone because the Bible said that we should pray one for another. Now, I want us to now prepare our hearts, certainly, for a wonderful lesson. I want to invite your attention to the New Testament, the Gospel, as recorded by Mark. I want to invite you to the 12th chapter, Mark chapter 12. And we just want to look at uh, a few verses. We've got a series that we're going to begin today in our teaching entitled The Greatest Commandment. The Greatest Commandment. So we want to start with Mark chapter 12 and we'll commence reading today with 
verse 28, and we'll just conclude with verse 30 today. And we ask all of you to be reading in your word, and I hope all of you are continuously reading in your word. We've sent out many of our daily breads, have sent out, and we're trying to make sure we're getting those out to the church members. And then, uh, if you have not received one and would like to have one, just contact the church office and we'll see to it that one is sent to you right away as we look forward to all of you continuing strong in the Word of God. If you're there, the Word of God shall read, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. The Word of God reads, Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I, I, I want to read that again. I want to read that again. Jesus says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Then he says, this is the first commandment. And I want to use as a topic today, give your all to God. Give your all to God. This is not a tap your neighbor portion of the sermon. We don't tap no more, we don't high five no more, but you can just tap yourself. Give yourself a high five and just say, give your all to God. Amen. If you give your all to God, there's two things that you must understand is very important in this process. First of all, write it down if you have something the way you're taking notes. If you're going to Give your all to God. First of all, you have to love God passionately. You have to love God passionately. You might ask, well, how do I love God passionately? I'm glad you did ask because it's right in the, this verse number 30 that we read in your hearing. Jesus gives us four ways to love God. He gives us four ways to love God. First of all, Jesus says you must love the Lord your God with what? All of your heart. And to love the Lord with all your heart means to love him with pure devotion. Pure devotion. Not enough to just give the Lord a place in our hearts. We are commanded to love him with all of our hearts. And to love God with all your heart, certainly you must be devoted solely to him. Amen. Not only must you be devoted solely to him, but he must always be on your mind. The old saints would sing a song, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. It ain't no harm to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind stayed on Jesus. And if you're going to love God with all your heart, you're going to have to have him always on your mind. And then not only devoted solely, be devoted solely to him and have the Lord always on your mind, but he must, he must be a priority, the number one priority in your life. He must be the number one priority in your life. Matthew 6.33 says it plainly and I can't express it no greater. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and his righteousness and 
his righteousness, not yours, but his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you, but you have to make Jesus the priority, the number one priority in your life. And then not only must there be uh, fully devoted solely to him, always on your, on your mind, he must be a priority in your life, you must be faithful to him. You have to be thou faithful unto death to him. So there must be devotion, there must be dedication, there must be a domination, and then certainly there has to be demonstration. For we know that faith without works is dead. You can say you love him, but if you don't show, what's the sense that you're talking about you do? You have to demonstrate it. Dr. William McDonald says that we are called to an everlasting preoccupation with God, an everlasting preoccupation with God. This is not a part-time, in for a minute, out the bench situation. No, you have to have uh, an everlasting preoccupation with God because there's none like him. Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me, he's my everything. Not only love the Lord, love God with all your heart, but you ought to love him with all of your soul. Amen. The soul speaks of our emotions. To love God with all our soul means to love, that our love for God ought to be full of passion. And unfortunately, our culture is growing more cynical every day. People have become apathetic, in other words, without passion, without care, without concern. And uh, I remember uh, Peanuts cartoon. Y'all remember old Charlie Brown and Lucy and all of those uh, on the Peanuts cartoon where Charlie Brown was talking to Lucy and he commented about the tragedy of so much apathy in the world today Lucy responded by saying, yeah, it's really terrible, but who cares? Oh, well, we go as Christians, we cannot afford to be apathetic about our love for God. We have to show a strong love for God. I mean, I mean, it has to really show, just like the Bible says in Matthew, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, and that your Father in heaven may be glorified. They have to see it. Amen. So we have to understand we cannot afford to be apathetic about our love for God. We must be excited about our relationship with Jesus. And to love God with all our soul means that when you have really given Jesus all your heart, it's easy to love him. And you ought to be excited about following him. You ought to be excited about doing the right things. You ought to be excited about being able to attack, attract others to the Lord as a result of what they see and hear from you. Because one thing for sure, that's why we're saved, that's why we're here, that we may go and that we may bring others and lead others to Christ. And they can't do it unless they see an excited love that you have for the Lord. Not only do we need to love God with all your heart, not only do we love God with all your soul, but Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your mind. With all your mind. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. While we should be excited about the Lord and express our emotions about him, let's always remain focused with our mind got to remain focused with our mind. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the scripture tells us that our minds need to be renewed. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you still got that same old thought process, you're going to keep on getting the same results of whatever it is you're thinking. But you have to renew your mind, and your mind has to be the same. It has to have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. In Peter, 1 Peter, 
verse 1, verse 17 says we need to prepare our minds for work. And here we are told to love God with all of our mind. Watch this, watch this. A mind committed to Christ, a mind being transformed by his renewing power, is a great asset to kingdom work. See, a mind that's committed to God will become a mind which God will pour his wisdom and his knowledge into. Amen. So let's, let's go ahead and bring it on in. Not only love God with all your heart, not only must we love God with all your soul, and not only must we love God with all your mind, but we ought to love the Lord with all your strength. Being a Christian is not just having a heart dedicated to God, a soul full of passionate love for Jesus, and a mind committed to thoroughly uh, engulf yourself in the whole word of God. Listen, we must con con consistently and completely live out the lifestyle of a true Christian. There must be full of passionate love for Jesus, and our minds should be committed thoroughly in the whole word of God. To love God with all our strength means to love God in all that we do, in everything. If the love of God is not involved, the bottom line is something's probably getting ready to go wrong. Listen, Colossians 3 and verse 17 says, And what, whatever you do, whatever you do in word, whatever you do in deed, says do it all in the name of Jesus. And if you scoot down to verse 23, it starts and reads, Whatever you do, do it heartily with your heart, with your whole heart, full of compassion and commitment. Do it heartily as unto the Lord, not man. In other words, you're not trying to please man. You're doing it to please the Lord. Amen. Since you receive whatever you get from the Lord, it is the Lord that you're serving. And it's, it is very important that we understand that we must what? Love the Lord with all your strength. You remember back in the day, before we got saved, we used to devote a lot of time to doing things for Satan. We used to put all of our effort in doing things that was not of God. But the bottom line is now that God has saved you, and you're on the Lord's side, you ought to be putting forth every effort, every strength, every energy that we got that the Lord gives us in serving him and living the life that he's calling for us to live. Let me close. To truly love God, you must love him in all that you do. A distinctive Christian lifestyle must be evident in the way you live your life, conduct your business, function on your job, how you deal with situations in your family, your spouse, your children, and other relations. Christianity becomes a powerful testimony when it's lived out to the fullest and you certainly are following the very first commandment which Jesus prescribes and he simply makes it clear that we should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And certainly this is the first commandment. We're going to stop there today, and we're going to pick up next week as it relates to the second commandment, as it relates to the same text. We're going to stay right there in the gospel as recorded by Mark. Now, there's also a cross-reference, I do believe a cross-reference of this particular text found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 through 40, and you can read that as well bring it both in, but both times it's talking about the first commandment as well as the second commandment. And I like the way Jesus closes out, and I'm going to close this out in saying, 
we're at the, at the end, he says, there is no other commandments greater than these, Lord have mercy. There are no other commandments greater than these, because it relates to both the first, first commandment and the second commandment. Well, saints, thank you so much for sharing with us, and we want you to know that God is still on the throne, and he's not working it out, and he's going to see us through all of this. We know a lot of things are taking place as far as protesting, and we're still dealing with pandemic situations, but one thing for sure, God will take care. So be not dismayed, whatever be time, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, he will, yes he will, I know he will, I'm a living witness he will, take care of you. Let us close with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for a wonderful lesson today. Thank you for this great commandment today as we try to live those things that are pleasing to you, Lord. We want you to know that we do love you and we do thank you for everything that you do. Continue, Lord, to keep us because we realize we can't make it without you. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Remember, remember saints, stay safe, stay sanitized, stay sanctified, stay sane, and stay strong in the power of his might. God bless you, God keep you, is our prayer. Give me you. Everything else can wait Give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Give me you Lord, give me you, I hope I'm not too late, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, cause it's me.
ghost must wait. Give me a 